Oh man, look at that show of eyes. Oh. What is going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new episode on the channel. It is hot. I am back in Japan for a very good reason. I'm film filming a new documentary, but today I'm at the Dainichi Koi farm and a lot of things are happening here today. They're busy with Senbetsu, selecting the koi fish, breeding koi fish, so just gonna take you through a tour. They have a very big shipment tomorrow, about 200 boxes are ready for their shipment tomorrow somewhere around the world. Won't spoil anything. But today I'm taking you around the tour. I had a great morning, visit some great farms, Terrazzo, Shintaro. I'm a little bit dirty, it doesn't matter. Guys, I'm gonna turn the camera around. We're in the main koi house now, and then I will take you to the other part where everything is happening now. So um, I hope you appreciate the episode, guys. Please give this video a like. So, all right, guys, so this is the main house of Dainichi. As you can see, they have like one, two, three, four, five, six, well, more than 15 pounds here. Uh, you must have seen these ponds in different episodes before, but just want to take a close look what is inside, what's still inside, because a lot of the fish are in the mud ponds. But look at that amazing tonsho. Wow, that's crazy. So Shigeru told me that the results that he achieves with his fish in his indoor growing ponds here in his main koi house are much better than the mud ponds. These fish getting food like almost all the year. They have great water temperatures, much better to control the water values. So the fish get also, of course, much faster big here. I will put a link in the description and you will recognize that fish immediately. Oh man, look at that. Beautiful Kohaku, look at that Sanke. It's always like such a blessing to be here walking around. Really nice Showa. Oh man, I could sit here for hours. So yeah, sorry, the, I, I saw the screen wasn't really focused, but that fish, guys. I'll put a link in the description or in the corner so you can uh, watch that video later. Really nice fish. Okay. Some stuff busy there. Oh wow, look at that. So they put some salt in here. Probably... Um, they probably use them for breeding. That's the reason why they, I think, put salt in there. Could be another reason as well. Oh man, look at that show of eyes. Oh, that's a monster. Oh. Wow. That's ridiculous. Okay, I was uh, I was wrong, guys. Uh, these are customer fish, so um, they just add some salt that will disappear very soon. Oh, look at that! <laughs> look at the body. Oh man! Look at these monsters. Every single time when I walk through this koi house, I am so amazed. It's June and I am um, filming a documentary, as I said in the introduction of this video, which I really like about this period because it's, it's, it's June. There are no dealers around, there are no hobbyists. The really cool thing about that is that the breeders are really working. This is their, one of their most busiest periods of the year. For example, here at the Dainichi Koi Farm, 
the staff works six or seven days a week. They start at 5.30, sometimes even till 7.30. So they're making a lot of hours to get everything done. And I will explain why, because it's breeding, they have to do Senbetsu, but they have 300 fry ponds to maintain. So that's crazy. Uh, talking about the shipment from tomorrow, I think it's tomorrow what I understand. Koi breeders are more often using these new boxes. I don't know the right word in English, maybe you can put it in the uh, comments, but it's really good. Big advantage compared to normal boxes, stronger and the temperature stays more stable, especially when you're shipping to hot countries, somewhere where this shipment is going. Uh, I'm gonna take you to that side because there's a lot of people busy with Senbetsu. And Senbetsu means that they are picking out the very small baby fry. In this case, it should be Showa. Or maybe it's Kohaku, we'll see. Konnichiwa. Hi, how are you? All right, so this is uh, Konnichiwa. So this is uh, what they're doing. They're picking out the small fish. And only the black ones. <laughs> so that means show up. <laughs> today they're working here with uh, 12. Oh, more people. Konnichiwa. All day long. And guys, this process takes months before they have done everything here. So I'm not sure if you can see it, but all the little ones are in here. And then they take the little tubes. You might see in a different episodes. And then you pick up the black ones. Awesome to see. So these are the ones that have already been picked out. As you can see, it's all black. Just a couple of days old and this could be a future potential brand champion you never know at least there should be some really nice ones in there so this is one of the koi houses that i really like i think these are yeah 100 parent koi some really beautiful females and of course there are some fish in there who aren't that beautiful anymore and that Kohaku, you might remember her last year of our video when we released her into the mud pond. And she is actually a former grand champion of the Tanichi Koi Farm. She is such an impressive fish, it's unbelievable. I'm really surprised how much koi are still in the greenhouses at this moment, at this time of the year. Uh, to give you uh, an example, in the autumn, all breeders, and of course also in the winter, they are getting their fish in and all tanks are like packed with fish before they are shipped. And some, of course, they stay for the winter. But here at the Dainichi Koi Farm, they still have a lot of fish compared to some other breeders I already visited my trip. They are empty. It's like they're painting the tanks. It's a whole different way of breeding this time of the year. Well, actually not breeding running their business, their koi business. And I think this is quite a fun period because there's so much things going on. And I think it's also more beautiful here in summertime. Everything is really green. Um, they are breeding behind this door. There's a sign here. Um, so I'm not sure if I can film. I will go inside. If it's not in the video, I cannot show you guys, but um, I'm gonna take a look. And if you see some footage, you're lucky. All right, so these are all empty, unfortunately. There's one there that still has fish in there. There's a reason why it's covered, so I'm not gonna film that. Uh, but as you can see, there's still a lot of eggs in this, this one. Uh, the brushes, what they use for breeding. More fish waiting. But yeah, so this is like the birth room. This is where most of the koi has been bred. And in a couple of months, Shigeru will take place in his corner here and he will um, start selecting every single fish personally. 
Okay, one more quick update. And I just thought maybe it's nice to go to Isa because Isa most of the time still has fish in their breeding or in their main koi house where they're breeding. Uh, this is a new building, really next across to the main building here at Danichi. This is gonna be a whole office building where they can receive their customers and where they have built, uh, where they have their offices. So they're not gonna use that office anymore. Which, um, something else that I noticed since a couple of months, most of the breeders, they are building new greenhouses, a lot of new greenhouses. Um, Shintaro Koi Farm. Um, of course, uh, Kano Koi Farm last year. Uh, but there are a lot of breeders that are building new koi houses, which is pretty interesting. That means more fish and maybe more varieties in the future. I'm gonna jump in my car and let's go to Isa and see if there's something I can show you there. Domo. So I just uh, ran into um, Mitsunori Isa. He is uh, finished with spawning, which is actually really good. And um, he still has some Asugari fish in these ponds. I was curious. Not a lot, actually. Let me turn the camera around. So these ponds are normally like really full with tosai or... But as you can see, it's uh, quite empty. So it was a really noisy inside. Let's take a quick look, at least at this koi house, and then we have another one there to see if there's some fish. But again, I think everything is already in the mud ponds, which is logical. Uh, stuff only. Well, I know we got permission here. Everything looks clean. Cleaning all the tanks. This is the tanks where they normally breed here at Isa. Oh yeah. As you can see, they're cleaning at the moment. Tomo. Which is a pretty uh, hard job. Oh, we got some Tosai here, some Jumbo Tosai. Wow. <laughs> These are huge. Unbelievable. Beautiful. So and this is the end result. Alright everyone, that's it. Just a short update here from Japan. Uh, again, I'm quite busy with filming the documentary, so won't be sure when that's that one is finished. Uh, I have two other big videos coming up first. Um, so I will let you know and maybe I have time to record some more of these episodes like this when I'm uh, here during my stay and filming for the documentary. Anyway, that's it guys. Have a great day. Uh, if you like the video, give it a like and see you in the next one.